Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to be here today. Thank you very much for the invitation and for the organization. So I'm Thierry Lombardo from the SIB, the Swiss Institute of uh, Bioinformatics, located, uh, I'm located in, uh, in Geneva, Switzerland. I'm going to talk today about uh, REA, a reaction database linking biology and chemistry. REA is a collaborative project between the SIB and the EBI. So what is the scope of the REA database? REA is a database of biochemical reactions. The biochemical reactions in REA are manually curated by experts. We try to have, as much as possible, a non-redundant database with normalized compounds at the chemical level. Because the compounds are normalized, it's possible for us to do balancing, so all the reactions are balanced in charge and mass. We link the reaction in REA to source literature, to publicly available uh, enzyme classification database, existing reaction database, and pathway databases. And a particular feature of REA is the fact that it's independent of the organism or a given species. So we are a database that is organism independent. So our job is to describe a biochemical reaction. So the core business is to describe accurately the reaction participants. On the left, the reactants, A and B, giving with a catalyst controlling the reaction, the product C and D. It's important for us, it's crucial, to chemically define each participant in a normalized way. This is the prerequisite in order to put the reactions in a network to identify the common participant of the reactions. So how to choose a reaction participant? The decision that was made in REA is to rely on the KB database. The KB database is a project from the EBI. It's a chemical ontology and a database of chemical compounds defined at the structural level. So when a REA curator reads a scientific publication or a set of scientific publications about a reaction or a set of reactions of interest, the REA curator will be able to select the right reaction participant within the KB database, if it exists, and will select using chemoinformatic tools the normalized compound, and then assign it to the different reaction participants. So we closely work with uh, the KB database in order to enrich it. In some cases, the reaction participant that the REA curator want to add in a reaction are not present in the KB database. An example would be a given chemical compound that is exotic, or another example would be a classical chemical compound, but the protonation state in KB is not yet there. So the REA curator are working with KB, and they are able, and they do it, they submit new entries to the KB database. The KB curator will enrich this information, will curate the ontology, and put it in the context uh, of the KB database. The compound is checked, and the REA curator can use them uh, within a reaction. We have double check, double check at the level of REA curation. Each reaction has been uh, controlled by at least two REA curators. Okay, so this is uh, the basic output of a curation work. So you can see here a reaction. Each participant is assigned a KBID. And the REA curator are also manually curated the links to uh, external databases. So each reaction is defined in a so-called master reaction, where the direction is not defined then we automatically assign IDs to the different reaction, left to right, right to left, and B directional, and then we can uh, add the manually created cross-references to the different direction. 
So here to unipathway, for example, reactions, keg reaction, metacyc, and here for the catalyst, uh, we link to the uh, EC number uh, using the intense database. Okay, so this is a broader picture of the REA uh, data ecosystem. So as I described, REA is built with the KB chemicals as reaction participants. So this is the, our link to have a, an ontology of reaction participants. We link, uh, we cross-link, we have cross-references with intents for the enzyme classification. And as you may know, uh, the Uniprot uh, entries are linked to the EC number using the enzyme database. So currently we don't have a direct link between Uniprot and REA. So uh, REA has uh, manually curated cross-references to the pathway databases, so UniPathway, um, Ecocyte, Metacyte, KEG, and at each REA release, which is a monthly release, we automatically compute cross-references between the REA and the Reactome database and REA and the MESI database. Next, so next to the pathway database, we also close, uh, work in close collaboration with gene ontology. So the gene ontology curators uh, submit requests um, to REA uh, to create new REA reactions. So we answer to those requests and the next month, the new REA reaction is they are ready to be cross-linked to a new gene ontology entry. On this part of the diagram, uh, we have more diversity. So this is uh, a set of projects that are automatically processing uh, the REA database. Uh, an example is the ECBLAST project, which is automatically processing all the REA reactions uh, in order to do atom-atom mapping. Okay, so here is a screenshot of the web page uh, of REA with the different export format that we provide at the moment. There is a short description of the different formats we provide. And what I would like to do today is just to give a kind of classification of those different exports that we provide. So this first classification is a, a historical one, let's say. Uh, we offer flat file exports, XML and RDF exports for the real data. So the flat files are typically the um, MDL CT files, so we have tab separated values export as well, but those uh, chemical tables files, uh, RXN, RD, MOL and SDF, are broadly used in the chemoinformatic fields and we provide them uh, for the real reactions. Okay, so there is another way to classify or to see those different exports. Uh, this is to put them on an axis chemoinformatics versus bioinformatics. And you can see that for the chemoinformatics format that we export, they are more fl uh, flat file oriented, uh, while the bioinformatics format are more uh, XML or RDF uh, oriented. So this is the current, current status. So an uh, uh, a MOL file, uh, I guess uh, some of you already know what this is. So this is a text file, uh, city, uh, city file system. This is a text file describing the atomic position to describe a molecule to the level of the atoms. SDF is a multi-MOL file with uh, annotation, so we can add uh, reaction annotation there. RxN RD, those are also uh, files with the atomic position, but uh, organized in reactions. RD is an annotated RxN. We also provide so this XML uh, version of the reaction, which is CML React. So CML is the uh, chemical markup language, and CML React is an ex is an extension uh, that has been uh, proposed a few years ago uh, to describe the reactions. So we have in this XML file then the molecular uh, description, but the reactions is the central part, and we have also the cross-references, so it also goes in the direction of bioinformatics. And uh, last but not, le not least, we provide a biopax export. Uh, so biopax is the biological pathway exchange format, a community-driven effort uh, to have uh, all RDF representation of pathway. 
Okay, so uh, we offer web services for those format uh, in, a, in a restful uh, way. Okay, so we have a biopass. What you can do is to use it in the context of the KB all. So basically, you can, if you have a triple store, you can import the KBRDF, which is the KB all file with the full ontology of the chemicals. You can import next to it the biopacks of REA, and then you can start asking questions to the data set. So for example here, for a given reaction of interest, a biologist might be interested in all the reactions in REA with the left participant of the reaction having the same KB parent as those molecules of interest. So you can compose a Sparkle query for that. So basically this is the Sparkle version of this uh, English text. <coughs> and you will get the results within seconds because <coughs> those data sets are not so big. Uh, you will see uh, the list of results with the KB parent here. And here, one of the results, for example, um, a reaction of interest uh, with uh, the left participant be having the same parent as the query. Uh, a reaction of interest. Okay, so I said before that we, at the moment, don't have a direct link between Uniprot and REA. But this is going to change. The perspective for uh, REA Uniprot is to use REA as a controlled vocabulary to describe the reaction catalyzed by the enzymes in Uniprot. So, you might be aware that a reaction in the catalyt catalyt catalytic sorry, activity in Uniprot is currently a description like this. So, in the future, the Uniprod curators are going to replace those textual uh, descriptions of the catalytic activity with a link to a real reaction. So, in the form uh, of this, for example, for the presentation, uh, but the presentation uh, form is, uh, is still open, but the basic difference is that all the reaction participants will be chemically defined down to the atomic level. Okay, so this is uh, where we are, but uh, in the meantime, so I would like to advertise the Uniprot Sparkle endpoint. So this is available for some time now, but uh, I would like to emphasize the fact that uh, we are running it on a new server, so a powerful server. So please use it, please try it with all the most complex queries you can have. So this is the URL, beta-uniprod.org. A common problem that people have by starting using Sparkle is that they don't know how to enter within the, within the data. So that's why we provide examples here, and uh, newcomers to the RDF world or to the Sparkle query world, they can just click on the different examples, which are described with free English text, and they can have then the query, submit the query, uh, check the results, and adapt the query to their particular needs. Uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to contact us, so we have a contact form, and uh, we have a team of uh, biologists and bioinformaticians uh, we, uh, who will be happy uh, to help you uh, compose your queries. Also give us feedback um, about uh, the speed of the Sparkle endpoint, if you can compose all the queries you want, mm -hmm. and we'll be very happy uh, to hear what you think about that. And last but not least, I would like to acknowledge uh, all the people contribu contributing to the RIA project and the uh, Uniprot RDF Sparkle endpoint, so my colleague uh, at the SIB uh, in Geneva, I would like to thank all the uh, people in the Christoph Steinbeck group uh, at EBI uh, who contributed to the REA project, and especially also the KB curators, which are really helpful and really contributing to the success uh, of REA. So please visit us, REA, uh, on the EBI side, and the beta uh, Sparkle Endpoint at Uniprot, and thank you for your attention. Thank you.